your shoes. Oh, hello. What are you up to? Hunting for water fans. Sorry about that, free shoes. I'm Te Oreo Ringa Tai Marvin. And I'm Julian Dinnison, and we're taking a break from our international superstar Beyonce tour to freshen up your day. We're putting the fun in Fano. Um, so here's what we've got coming up today. Uh... Our native beavers bring the native do's and don'ts to keep it fresh. Oh, this, this one doesn't know what she's talking about. Auntie Tala is back at it again, the sort of helpful advice. You are very lucky as the island girl to have a boyfriend, especially at 57. I'm going to take you to see a bit more of my world. My brothers and sisters, I'll be like, man, I'm famous as, and they'll be like, not until you get a million dollars, you ain't famous, and not until you pay for this, you ain't famous to me, mate. <laughs> so what are we going to do today? I don't know. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> Why are we going into a barber? Are you ready to get baited up or boxed up or whatever? Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. How much barber experience do you have, T? All of it. Um, well, it's not like shearing sheep, you know that. I know, but I'm going to make you look so fresh like these guys at Barbercraft. Check it out. <laughs> Hello, Palava, I'm Matt. I'm the owner of my father's barbers, Sea City, Price City. Barbercraft is an important event because it um, showcases barbers from urban barbers, from barbers in the hood, which I personally reckon are the best barbers. I'm not just an urban barber, I'm a barber. I'm not a female barber, I'm a barber. You know, I'm not a, a barber that just cuts models, I'm a barber. And so, yeah, barber cup is cool, it brings everyone together. It's so, like, hey, you know, we're different coloured skin, different backgrounds, but um, our story's all the same, we all love to cut here. Today we're looking for people to showcase their, uh, their skills and their ability and pride in their craft. Skills range from clipper work to scissor work to blade work, the whole shebang. Being a female barber, you got to be onto it and you got to be ready for it. I uh, did it from a young age and I think that more females should enter it. Being in a business like this, you need to be very competitive, plus you're going up against uh, males in the Flexibly trying to you know, represent my, my little neighborhood. So, yeah, a lot of talent out there, man, but they just just get left behind. They, they, they don't jump on the bus, man. They just gotta believe in themselves. Yeah. Keep it For all the barbers to come around and uh, just all rub shoulders with each other and have a yarn about barbering and have some fun in the competition. So today, um, my presentation, I just did um, some Renaissance art pieces. I did the Last Supper. I did the Adam and God hands, the fingers of Adam and God. I did the Mona Lisa, which is the greatest art piece 
um, in the world, which is yeah, the most talked about, the most sung about art piece. It always starts with the head. Now you know how to keep it fresh from the fade to the braid. Mama's Baba's keeping it fresh. want me to shave Beyonce's face and the back of your head. No, no, I want you to tell me what's next on the show. No, Beyonce? I'm just, oh, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave. Wait, you better be back after the break and you better be back too. It was, you know, definitely on set it was quite hard, you know, evolving and getting into the character of Ricky Baker, but Taika and especially um, Rachel House and um, Sam really helped me get into the character. Or, Ange, Orange. Wait, 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 see that couple there? Yep. Yeah, they have an orange marriage. Orange? Yeah, orange. Orange, really? Yeah, that's what I say, orange. Don't you mean arranged marriage? Well, orange, you smart, hey? Hmm, cutie little things. Your five head is orange. Your fake ten's orange. Kia my name is Julian Dennison, and when I'm not hunting for water people, the water chicks are hunting for me because I'm skucks. But there's more to me than skucks. Welcome to my world. It's not really, a, it's not a funny moment, but it's an embarrassing moment. So there's a scene where I first get this dog in the film and I go to bend down to give it a hug. And in one of the shoots, um, as you can say, I cut the cheese. Yeah. So I went to go bend down and I had to go toilet and I let out some loose air. And then I got up and I'm like, sorry. And then they all said, oh, we thought it was the dog. And I was like, Stay! I can see you when you dance, 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 feel the good creeping up on you, so just dance, 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 Come on. All those things I should do. Tēnā koutou te kātou, ko mai ngā tautari te maunga, ko tōpe hai hai te awa, ko wai kātou te rohe, ko roku mō Ricky Baker. Regular. Yeah. We're hoping that this change of scene will help straighten them out. You hungry? That's a silly question, isn't it? Look at you. <laughs> so my role, I play a character called Ricky Baker. He's a foster kid. Um, he's been moved home from home. He doesn't really like talking to people. He's really close. He's really like, you know, keep it to himself. It was, you know, definitely on set was quite hard, you know, evolving and getting into the character of Ricky Baker, but Taika and especially um, Rachel House and um, Sam really helped me get into the character. You know, Sam Neill, who was in Jurassic Park, the Piano, Sleeping Dogs, a whole lot of movies, really famous, while he worked with this guy. This guy, yep, this guy. I know, you're looking at me like, <laughs> Why would he work with that guy? But he worked with this guy. OK, this is Heck. You can call him uncle if you like. No, I can't. Well, it told me to tell you that you should give me something to do. Is there anything you want me to do? Yeah. Leave me alone. Cool. We don't worry about it. Different, you know, walking down the street, you get a lot more. Is that Ricky Baker or is that's that boy off the movie? You like, you can, and you can see people like people be pulling out their phones, getting ready to take selfies and stuff. So it's a lot different. Well, there's like the science thing called gravity, and um, it like holds you to the ground, so you know you ain't gonna float off. No, um, but uh, definitely my family, they keep me grounded. You know, knowing that, you know. No matter how big your head get, it's not gonna get as big as the aunties. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just joking, I'm just joking, Mom. I'm just joking, I'm just, I'm sorry. So, um, they always keep you grounded, definitely the family and my brothers and sisters. I'll be like, man, I'm famous as, and they'll be like, 
Not until you get a million dollars, you ain't famous. And not until you pay for this, you ain't famous to me, mate. <laughs> It has been interesting to see my most shy baby um, evolve into someone who is comfortable um, Not baby in a number child. of ways. Child. He'll be my baby at 60. Myself and my husband, I think the thing we're most proud of is what hasn't changed. What's fresh about me? Oh yeah, I'm a twin. No, we're brothers, we're twins. Um, yeah, I said my name's Julian Dennison, and he's Christian Dennison, right. if you don't pay. Don't you agree? Uh, okay, we'll just cut that out. Yeah. Every time me and my mates see each other at school, we walk up to each other like, I have some pretty white friends. Um, but I'll walk up to them and they'll be like, oh, stop, bro, and I'll be like, oh, God. and then we'll give each other a hoggy in the middle of class. So, um, I don't know if that's fresh enough. I do like jandals. They're really comfortable. My mum wore jandals, um, in Berlin when it was about minus five, I think. Our luggage was not at the airport when we got there. It was on the later flight. So I only had board shorts because I was from New Zealand. My legs don't get cold. I'm like an Iron Man, you know, solid, titanium. I was walking around minus five, mum was in her jandals, and all of these tourists get off the bus. And they're like, oh, he's, he's gonna get hyper, hyper, hyperfemia, he's gonna die. So, yeah, I can wear shorts anywhere and my legs won't get cold. Keep on running, cause the winner don't quit on themselves. It's great being back here at the Marae with the cousins and the aunties. But you know, these days you gotta watch out for the auntie eyes, you know. Cobra like, they strike at any minute. You know, the eyes, you know, they look everywhere like an eagle. Gotta do those dishes, boy, eh? But you know, we got some aunties next who's gonna teach you how to watch out for the auntie eyes. I wouldn't be here, today here are tips to read the Pukana by Māori Wahine. Yeah, so I'm oh, the tip. So I tell you what. Left cheek, right cheek, left cheek, right cheek, left cheek. Tip 101. Māori Wahine have their code. Eyes are the communication to everybody. That's the Māori subtext of everything. It's a no-filter yeah. look. It's a crease in the yeah. middle. Yeah. The crease comes through, mm. and then the grit happens, and then the flint of the eyes, which yeah. takes you to that special pukana, never to be seen on the kapaka stage. That's right. Flat to the art. Yes, that is the modern-day use of pukana all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's the sting operation. It's the deha. It's the hiding without touching. <laughs> <laughs> This is how you know a Māori wahine is really quite angry at you without even saying a thing, I do the eyes. See, it's it's the slight down, it's the... Mm. And mm. she's agreeing with you by voice that yes, yes, but her eyes are like... Mm. Yes, the death stare. Yes. Left cheek, right cheek, left cheek, right cheek. The pity pukana. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Oh, cup idea. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a real raised one, it's a real tight one, and you yeah. just, yeah, you're giving a hiding, it's a special hiding. <laughs> it's a real whack <laughs> in your track. Left cheek, right cheek, left cheek, right cheek. And there's the ones where you're like, oh, oh, oh this, this one doesn't know what she's talking about. Yeah. It's the quick. Mm, kia ora. Yeah. Kia ora. <laughs> thanking you, thanking you. Mm. That's when mm. they don't stop me. And I've got, the, I've got all the others. But, um, and what do you mean others? You've got them all too. Yeah, because they come from you. <laughs> you know them from experience. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys should go rest your eyes for a bit because I have to go find Tia Ore Ore. But after the break, there will be her favourite auntie ever. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Sometimes if you're with a guy and they do things to make you cringe, it means you don't really like him. No. Maybe you're just not that into him. Yeah. So just putting that out there as well. Chicken wing. Chicken wing. 
Bro, I don't know why my mum keeps buying the lottery tickets. She probably thinks chicken wings some money. Again, eh, what? Sorry, I know how I'm gonna make it up to you. How? Um, your favourite auntie's bag, who puts O and OMG. You know what it is. Tala, tala, tala. Kia ora. Hi, it's Auntie Tala here, and guess what, what? It's another episode of Tao Tala Tala. And I've got an amazing panel for you today, starting off with my favourite TV presenter. Please give it up for Miriam Akamo. Yeah! Woohoo! And my all-time favourite hip-hop artist from Wellington, now in Auckland. Please give it up for King Kapisi. And my favourite actress, they insist, oh, she's so awesome. You want to see her on every magazine and TV program, please give it up for Teo Willa. Wow, thanks guys for coming today. Yeah, now it's time to listen to your question and my panel will try and answer it and maybe even make things worse. Let's go to our video message. Hi, Auntie Tala. My Balangi boyfriend is a bit of a try-hard with my Samoan family. It makes me cringe. Should I just get over it or tell him to calm down with his wannabe Samoan? Mmm, wow, that was a very interesting question, eh? Well, how about we start with you, Miriam? What do you think about this? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I did I did actually date a guy once who would put on a Māori accent every time he was around Māori people. Wow. <laughs> but you know what, it, it did make me cringe, but what I thought was, uh, I loved that he was trying and yeah. that he wanted to be part of the Fano. <laughs> yeah. But do you know, I just what I had to do was I had to focus on the things that I really liked about him. And one of them was that he was trying so hard. So yep, he was a try hard, and it's not bad a bad thing necessarily wow. to try hard. So that's what I focused on as well as all the other good things about him. Just great. How about you can capture how many girls? I mean what have you brought any girls home that maybe have changed their way or oh. just to impress the family? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, on a, another point I was trying to think was that maybe if he tries too hard, the family might get annoyed like the rest of the family. That was another thing I was thinking that, um, the, you know, they might react in a different way where they might actually fussy him or something like that if he acts yeah, too hard, true. just in case. So that was true. one of the points I wanted to bring up as well. Yeah, it's a good point too. Thank you. Especially from a male perspective, you know, if that was your sister and you're bringing home someone like that, you, as yes. a brother, you won't smash his face. What about you, Tewila? Um, I agree with what Maniama says, though. I think she should actually embrace the fact that her partner is trying to make such an effort wow. because, you know, it can happen that she could be with a Balangi who wanted to take her away from the culture. Yeah. That, that would, you know, that's another alternative. And another point I just want to throw out there, Amanda, is from just a girl point of view is sometimes if you're with a guy and they do things to make you cringe, it means you don't really like him. Maybe oh. you're just not that into him. Yeah. So just putting that out there as well. Yeah. But I think, yeah, really appreciate the effort that he's making. Yeah. It means he's really into you. Well, uh, this is the opportunity where you can actually tell Amanda maybe something that you need her to listen to, you know, in terms of her question. So we start with you, please, Miriama. Sure. What would you like to say to Amanda? So, Amanda, I would say, who's cringing the most? Figure that out first. Then, if it's still a problem, sit down with your partner mm. and talk to him about your concerns. And if he's willing to change, well, that's probably a good thing. If he's not, then figure out whether he's the man you want to be with. And then, ultimately, figure out really whether it's a, a big enough problem for you to actually sit down and, and address anyway, because maybe you're the one with the problem and not him or his family, or your family, rather. Yeah, wow. What about you, King Caps? What would you like to say to Amanda, me? I'd give him a month, and if it's not working, mm. keep being. Oh, straight up. Cut yeah. it straight up. It. Straight up the guts. Wow. Like, if it's not working, cut it. That's right. Well, That's I like nice. that approach. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Tawila? Well, Amanda, as I was saying before, I think just be really grateful you've got someone who's making an effort and also, ultimately, be really glad you've got a family who lets you have a boyfriend. Mm, yes, very good. <laughs> Especially an island girl. Yeah. So, all I want to say now, from me straight to you, Amanda, like Tawila said, you are very lucky as an island girl to have a boyfriend, especially at 57. So right now, Amanda, I just want to say to you, 
you know, don't worry about those little, don't nicky picky on those little things. You should be happy that you have a boyfriend. I never have one to have a liar. Happy that you have a boyfriend. I never have one to have a liar. Boy, great, but thank you once again to our panel. See you next week. Come on! Hey, Tia, it's been really fun hanging out with you, making yeah, Wellington yes. fresh. Yes, you too, you too. What do you reckon we're hunting for next? Well, I'm going to hunt for next week's show. Kaki Tia Freshies! Woo! I say welcome, welcome to the jungle Where things will never... I fall about all the time, especially in interviews. Like, we've probably done this so many times. <laughs> Take again. No. There's more than three fobby things about me, but yeah, we'll stick to that three. <laughs> Cause that's where we're filming fresh. Da -na 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 -na. It's fresh. Da -na 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 -na.